a year into this pandemic and it's been intense and it's been heart-wrenching to see families, to see several family members at once in the hospital. But I am able to go inside the room and, and I try to do that as much as I can. I prefer to be inside the room with the patient, with the family. Most often patients and families want to receive prayer. I prayed for a COVID patient just the other day, asked if I could put my hand on her just to pray for her. She started to weep uh, just uncontrollably. And afterwards she was, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think what partly what was happening was the grief of the isolation, not just the disease, but of the isolation of being separated from her family and all that just kind of came out during that time. I encourage uh, patients and family members to say whatever they need to say to their family members, even if they don't know that their family member can hear. Let them know that they love them. Speak to them. And, and you don't know what their spirit can receive. We're not just human bodies. We have a mind, a soul, which is our, you know, our mind, our will, our emotions, and our and a spirit. And all of those are interrelated. And so when one is not healthy, it affects the other. So we can be struggling emotionally, uh, or with our mind or our spirit, and it can affect our physical body as well. So really, this restoration involves this, the science of you know physically doing whatever we can to help that patient. But part of that restoration, I believe, is is the restoration of hope, the restoration that God loves them, the restoration of connection with their community. Um, all all that is part of the healing process. All of our staff, nurses doctors, respiratory therapists, all of them have come up to the plate in terms of caring for patients during this pandemic. I'm just grateful to be in an environment where uh, there's been this kind of collaboration.